I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. I want to talk about smart fasting today. Uh, fasting has become a fad in many people's lives. There's a lot to be said about fasting. I believe in fasting. It's therapeutic. It's magical. It's something that comes naturally to the human body. But I also believe that fasting doesn't always have to suit everyone. This way of living where one shoe fits it all has to end. You know, when you look out there, there's, there are so many claims around fasting. Yes, there are powerful claims where uh, cancer patients who have fasted, people have seen their tumor shrink, and at the same time, you see other cancer patients who fast and it doesn't work for them. You have diabetics who use fasting to reverse their type 2 diabetics, and then you have diabetics who fast, but their blood sugar levels get worse. You have people who have reversed their hyperacidity and their GERD problems with fasting. And you have other people with GERD and acidity problems where it gets worse because they need to eat maybe every three to four hours. You have a ton of people who lose good body fat when they fast the right way. And you have a ton of people where the scale doesn't budge, they don't even lose a single inch. So fasting is not your magic tool. It's part of a good lifestyle. Yes, there is one thing that human beings are eating way more than they should be eating. There is no doubt about that. But you don't have to correct that with extreme fasting. In balance, you can even just cut down. If you're used to eating so much today and you cut it down to maybe three, four tomorrow, you made good progress. Now, what I like about fasting is because yes, the human body is designed to keep long gaps between certain meals, especially we know today it's a scientific fact that the human body is not designed to break down heavy meals late at night, which is why science is moving us more towards early dinners and then keeping a gap from the time you end your early dinner right up till next morning. And most people will realize they're not hungry at seven in the morning or eight in the morning. So they go on fasting till maybe 9.30 or 10, 11, and they get a beautiful 12 to 14 to 15 hour fasting cycle, which is as per your circadian rhythm without even trying. And they feel awesome. And then you have one population that is beating themselves up with 22 hours, 24 hours, 76 hours. I'm not here to judge them. Do it if it suits you. The question is to ask, what are you trying to achieve? Okay, there is no sign showing you that if you do like four day fasts, you're gonna be healthier than someone else. I recommend long-term supervised fasting when, you're, when you have a disease, maybe once in three or four months, just to clean out your full system, you know, give your body that complete overhaul. But there are people who are trying to do that every week and you're really not getting anything out of doing that. It's better to correct your lifestyle, get into a cycle which adapts to your circadian rhythm, which means have an earlier dinner. And when you're hungry in the morning, try to keep a 12 to 14 to 15 hour gap. That's good enough for most people. Even 12 hours of fasting is great. So what happens is a lot of people compare themselves with other people doing one meal a day. I have nothing against that. 18 hours, 21 hours, and they feel like I'm so horrible. I can't even do 12 hours. Well, guess what? If 12 hours works for you, it works for you. We have thousands of patients across the world who do 12 hours and they're doing beautifully. We have patients who are doing beautifully on 15 hours, 16 hours, 18 hours. Every one is different. You can't just decide to start fasting today at seven in the evening, tomorrow at midnight, day after at three in the morning. You're confusing your body. You're, you're confusing your body. There has to be a rhythm. Your body needs to know when you're gonna start fasting and approximately when you're gonna start eating. So you can't just to suit your lifestyle and your social life, you can't keep changing your timings. That's when we say smart fasting is not so smart anymore. A couple of other things that we've observed with fasting, we have arthritic patients whose pains have literally lessened and some of them claim that their pains have disappeared with the onset of fasting. We have arthritic patients where it's not even made a difference. So the point is, if it suits you, find your niche. You don't have to fast every day. You can if it suits you. I know people who can fast once a week, who fast twice a week. Some people do it every full moon. Some people do it twice a month. They just do a 24 hour complete fast. They found their niche. Find your niche. There is no magic. The whole 16, 8, 16, 8. Ask why not 17? Why not 15? Is there magic in 16? No, but the world and social media likes to put you in a box that this is your box. 16, 80, 16, 8 is perfect for you. If it's perfect for you, great, but it doesn't have to be. What if it's 15? What if it's 18 for you? Your body is dynamically changing. You can never put it in a box. There are people today who will fast for 14 hours. Tomorrow, they'll break their fast in 12 hours because their body is hungry, really physically hungry. There are other people who may fast for 18 hours 
And then on another day, they may not even be able to fast for 10 hours. And when we speak to these people, they say, oh yeah, I was sleep deprived last night. Or I had so much of mental energy consumption with my work and heavy business meetings. The body asked for food. I gave it food. You should be so dynamic with your body that you listen to your body. Not even the best professional or the scientist can tell, or a scientist in this world can tell you how many hours of fasting you need. Your body needs to tell you that. It's as simple as that. And it tells you that by trying. Of course, the first day of your fasting, if you've never been, done it before, it's gonna be a little bit difficult, mainly because of the hunger pangs that come out of habit. The second day, you'll find it's getting a little bit easier. The third day, it's gonna be a breeze, which is why I recommend everyone, if you're starting off to fast, do it for three days. Start with a minimum of 12 hours and then add it on. I have people who started with eight hours and then they moved to 10 and then 12, and some of them today are at 14, some of them are at 18. But you need to understand why you do it. So break down the concept. We have something called an MMC in our body. That's a, that's a migrating motor complex. And this is beautiful. Understand how it works. When we're not eating our food, so between meals on our fasting, in our fasting stage, okay, every, third, every 90 minutes to 120 minutes, the MMC turns on. This, think of this as a housekeeping activity. Okay, it cleans out your stomach, it cleans out your small intestines, pushing out all the bad bacteria out of your system. Whereas if I'm constantly eating, we never activate the MMC and that's how bacteria tends to grow and stay stagnant in our small intestine, leading to a common issue that I think maybe one in seven to eight people have, which is called SIBO. That is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It comes with bloating and IBS-like symptoms and acidity and constipation and loose motions, bad breath, thrush or candida and all of these things you know so your gut's trying to tell you hey you have the wrong bacteria so the human intelligence of the body is we are built with systems to look after us protect us detoxify us if we allow it to do it we don't really need to do anything over and above of course times have changed if i'm living in a city where pollution is high okay maybe my liver's getting overburdened and its natural detox mechanisms will not be able to work alone so then we help it with liver detoxes with the right foods with the right lifestyles because times have changed but you need to understand when it comes to fasting only you can decide the niche and I think the unhealthiest and the unhappiest fasters are the ones who compare. It's constantly competition. Oh, he did 16 hours. I'm going to do 17 today. Why? Listen to your body. Your body is a beautiful collection of biology, chemistry, physiology, and mystery that even scientists and doctors don't understand. It speaks to you. It tells you how long you need to fast. I've had cancer patients with brain tumors who fasted for 48 hours, some of them two days, some of them three days only on water. Some of them we saw, unbelievable. We saw their tumor shrink. The doctor said, just go back and continue what you're doing because we don't have medicine. And we saw other cancer patients where it didn't make a difference. The patient was constantly hungry. So we fed them food, the right kind of food. So everyone's biological makeup is unique. Do not beat yourself up with fasting. Then you have a whole lot of population where just a fast because it's become a fad, they want to drink coffee and tea during fasting. Fasting is water. Of dry fasting is no water and no food. Decide to do it the right way or don't do it at all. Don't do it at all. It's like half the vegans out there, no, no disrespect to vegans, they, they talk about animals and meat, but yet they want mock meat. It, I don't understand it. Why do you want mock meat if you're against meat? Eat your vegan food. So it's like that. We should, we should change our mindsets and we should change the way we think about things. If you want to fast, it's beautiful, therapeutic, but do it the right way. Anyone can fast with one or two or three cups of coffee. Anyone. Because you've bumped up your adrenaline, your cortisol. We know coffee suppresses the appetite. The whole idea is to keep your digestive system completely clean. So it gets a complete break. Why would you put one of the most acidic beverages? Coffee is a great beverage when you have it the right way. But why would you put something acidic in a stomach, in a system that's fasted for 12 to 30 to 14 hours? Yeah, maybe Western civilization teaches us these things because for them, shortcuts are huge. And unfortunately, that's hitting our country again. And I don't say it in a disrespectful way. We want to copy everything without even questioning. Fasting is fasting. You don't put stimulants in a body that is trying to fast. The beauty of fasting is rest. The digestive system gets rest, but here you're stimulating it with caffeine that is designed to raise your cortisol and your adrenaline levels. So no, no lemon water, no green tea. It's, if you, you wanna fast, don't, don't aim for 20 hours if you can't do it. Fast for 12 hours, but do it the right way with just water.
As simple as that. You don't have to beat yourself up. So maybe you decided to fast on Monday. Like I like to fast on a Monday because usually Saturday and Sunday, it's my weekend. I am gonna eat. I am gonna live a life that I enjoy living. And I fast on Monday and I fast on Thursday, just before. But every single day, my dinner's over by 6.30 and I eat at 9.30 in the morning. So I have a 14 to 15 hour by default circadian fast that works for me. I don't have to try to do it. Maybe once in a month, I'd like to get a 24 hour fast. I've not done it for the last two months because of the summer, the heat, and I've just not felt like doing it. But I listen to my body. It's not like I've gotten sicker by not doing it. I still feel great. And sometimes your body just says, no more eating, shut down your system. So I stop eating after lunch, uh, uh, after lunch on Sunday from 2.30 and I go on right up till Monday, maybe for 20 to 24 hours. But I listen to my body. That's my story. Everyone's different. My story doesn't have to be yours. But all I'm trying to say is fasting is beautiful. It's smart. Yes, sometimes if you want to achieve a particular goal from your fasting, like you really want to look at those cancer cells being starved, there are extended fasts that you do, but supervised. I've had patients who have tried to fast and their vitals are going down, their blood pressure is dropping, blood sugar levels are all over the place, and now all of a sudden they're pumped with more antibiotics and insulin only to get their vitals back in place and it just disrupts the entire process of fasting. So if you're gonna do long fasts, do it in a supervised way. I'll leave you with a couple of questions. People do one meal a day, two meals a day. I don't have a problem, but I hope you're thinking about in that one meal a day, are you able to get all the nutrition I'm not talking about your macros, all the nutrition that your body requires. Your body requires a certain amount of minerals, vitamins, phenols, flavonoids, quercetin from different foods, from a variety of food. If you're doing one meal a day, how much can you eat at one time? So yes, you may be losing weight, you may be feeling energetic, which is the beauty of coming down to one meal a day or fasting, but the question you need to ask yourself, am I getting the nutrition that I... So like thousands of patients that we've seen, They've, they've done crazy stuff to lose weight, and then they've come to us with the most deadliest diseases caused by micronutritional deficiencies and other problems. So while you're chasing weight loss, I know it's important for you, you can do it the right way. There are tons of people who lose weight gradually and gracefully maintaining their overall health. And there's a ton of other people who think they need to punish their bodies with extremes and get off everything and they lose weight, they're still unhappy, their skin sags, they have pigmentation, and they have new onset diseases and ailments. So there are ways, some people like to go low carb. Low carb is powerful. If it suits you, do it the right way. Some people are more carb efficient. They work better with good comp complex carbs, good quality carbs, some, some bodies are fat efficient. Everyone is different. Don't ever let social media or any professional put you in a box. Today, with eight years of consulting with patients from cancer to obesity, I still can't tell you what I'm gonna tell my next patient, whether he needs low carb, high fat, whether he needs eight hours of sleep, whether he needs one hour of meditation. I don't know that until we've spent a lot of time talking, going into their lifestyle, taking the first week to see what works for his or her body, how it suits his or her body. So the one shoe fits it all doesn't work. You are unique as an individual. Another question I wanna leave you thinking, there are millions of people in the world who are just eating. They eat what they get, okay? They eat what they get. They're not crazily chasing health and obsession. They're doing their basics. They walk, they sleep well at night, they eat everything in balance. They have healthier reports than some of the fitness freaks that exist out there. I know people who have two drinks a day and they're 95 years old right now. Happy people, happy people, doing a quarter of what social media health keeps telling people to do all the time, but disciplined when to stop eating, when to start eating, eat on time, eat slowly, bless your food, be happy, be grateful. So, you know, I think we need a mindset change at this point. Do we need extremes? Because if extremes really worked, then you would have only the extreme groups who are the healthiest, the happiest, and the fittest people. But it isn't true. It isn't true. You know, we, we can't say anything about people today. I have sick vegans and sick non-vegetarians. I have cancerous vegans and cancerous vegetarians and cancerous non-vegetarians. We're yet to see the data that says that, hey, all the vegans are the healthiest people or all the non-vegetarians are the healthiest people. No, everyone is different and fasting is beautiful. Even if you can't do 12 hours, the next recommendation is try to keep a gap of at least four hours between your meals completely clean out your systems, four hours between your meals. Again, 
someone who's highly acidic because they've not worked at changing their lifestyle may need to eat every two, three hours. Someone else, this four hour eating may just solve their acidic problem. You gotta try. I can't tell you what's right for you unless you start trying little things. So even if you can't fast and you don't like to fast, go back to the olden times where you had a meal four hours. You were not constantly eating nuts and then eating chana and then eating something else because you don't allow the MMC to get activated. When we eat a meal, it's a beautiful process. We digest it, we break it down, it moves through our system, nutrient assimilation, absorption, and then the digestive system needs rest. It needs a break. It needs a break. Your pancreas have to stop producing digestive enzymes. Your acids have to settle down. But if you're constantly eating, you can imagine what's happening. You can imagine what's happening in you. Of course, there are certain people, athletes, bodybuilders, who will have a different requirement, different from laymen, because that's their livelihood and that's their sport and that's what they're, that's what they're trying to do. But everyone is different. Introduce smart, smart fasting in your life. It doesn't have a number. It doesn't have a number. Today I can tell you, I, I can tell you from a brain cancer experience, you know, I can't tell my brain cancer patient who wants to fast right now in the US whether three days of fasting or nine days of fasting is good enough. The advice is start fasting. You got your nurse with you, your vitals are being monitored, start the process. Let's go with the flow because we don't know what's gonna happen in your body and how your body's gonna react. So don't plan big things. Start off with small little steps. The easiest way to start smart fasting, try to finish your dinner as early as possible, close to sunset. You will find it easier to fast and most people will not wake up ravenous in the morning. The circadian rhythm fasting is the most beautiful fasting system because it works with the laws of nature. When we resist the laws of nature, when there's resistance, there's difficulty. But automatically, as the sun sets, our digestive system start to shut down automatically. Of course, it can break down a meal you're eating at midnight because the body works on survival. You feed it, it will break it down. But with sluggishness, with a change in your blood sugar levels, even your blood pressure. So you may want to try this for the next seven days try to eat because we're locked down. Most of us, at least in India right now, we're at home. So you have the ability, you don't have an excuse of having to be somewhere else. You have the ability to start a nice 6.30 or 7 o'clock meal. Stop worrying right now whether you'll be hungry at 11 or 12. Deal with that later. Start 6.30 to 7 and go on till the next morning as much as you can. Don't plan I'll have breakfast at 8 or 9. Don't. Plan when your body tells you. And then get into a nice niche and find your path when it comes to fasting. Whether it's one day a week, two days, every day, 14 hours, 12 hours, it's going to be different every single day. When we look at our data of people, people who do smart fasting, which is exactly what I told you, are our healthiest and our happiest people. Don't put yourself into a box. It's very easy to be put into a box with social media and content and all of these things. It's good, there's great information, but always use your logic, your own inner wisdom, your gut instinct, and ask, when I do something, how do I feel? Everyone's just doing something because everyone is doing something. But when you do something, how do I feel? Oh, I ate this fruit, does it make me feel full? Out there, someone's screaming and telling you, oh, mangoes are gonna make you sick, mangoes are gonna make you fat. Someone else tells you, don't eat this seed. Someone else tells you that. Now, how does it work with you? How does it work with you? When I look at my clients, my team, my doctors, we, we talk about our families. My parents are now almost 80 years old. They've eaten white bread all their life. They don't have diabetes. They don't have heart problems. I'm not supporting white bread, but it's worked for them. And when I talk to their friends, all of them have certain things that they've done all their life too. And we have people in their 20s and 30s and 40s fighting over brown bread and wheat bread and sourdough bread, and they have diabetes and all the conditions that another part of the generation doesn't have at all. So I'm not here to support white bread. It isn't good for us, but support the fact that Human bodies can adapt as well. So stay away from extremes where people tell you, oh, this is sugar, that is sugar, this behaves like sugar, that behaves. No, how does it work with you? How does it work with you? Otherwise, the French would be the most frowned upon society right now. They eat high fat butter, they smoke, I'm not telling you to smoke, they have pastries, they have sugar. They're fitter than most of the extreme groups around the world who are talking about mango is sugar, this is sugar, that is sugar, and that's it. So please make up, have a mind of your own. Have a mind of your own and eat and watch. Listen to your body. Okay, I ate something, it's made me gassy. Okay, fine, what was wrong with it? Does this food suit me? Maybe I didn't soak it enough, maybe I overate. Keep asking and once you start communicating with your body, your body really starts to talk to you more and you start to listen. You don't need anyone to tell you what's right for you. 
Have a great day, everyone. Have a great weekend. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. And remember, try this out. Okay, let the weekend pass. From Monday onwards, I want each of you all to try smart fasting. If it works for you, great. Great, it is a beautiful feeling. You know, you'll realize, hey, Luke, I fasted so much, but my energy levels are amazing. Why? You've cleaned up your entire system. The more you fast, your liver gets cleaner. When your liver gets cleaner, fat burn happens. When your liver get, gets cleaner, energy levels soar to the top. It's a beautiful thing because we were never designed to eat as much as we eat today. And that's why we can, we, the body still works on a mechanism of feasting and fasting, which means sometimes we can have a really great feast. And then if we have those feasts every day that most people do, you have all the consequences of it. But if I feast on a Sunday and during the week I'm back to target and I'm eating well and I'm doing my circadian fasting and stuff, you're gonna have a beautiful life enjoying the way you wanna live and keeping your health intact. Because as I say that, there are millions of people across the world who have found that balance and found that happiness. And there are millions of people who are in extremes, groups, getting results, unhappy, and nothing to really prove that their ways are better or not. So keep it simple. Always keep it simple. You are a unique individual. Do what works for you. There is always stuff we can learn. Every day I'm learning there's this new leaf that's growing in the garden. That's amazing. There's this new fruit. There's this new vegetable that grows in the village and it's rich in iron and folic acid and I'm trying it. Does it suit me? Great, I'm gonna have it. You know, be curious, be curious. There's so much. Before we had the internet and Google and books, that's how human beings learned. They learned how to identify a poisonous mushroom from a non-poisonous one. Which, which uh, leaves could be boiled and take away a stomach pain, break a fever. We have intuition in us. We have wisdom. Don't dampen it with all the crap that you see on social media and connect inward sometimes. It makes a big difference. Have a great day, everyone.